video, I'm gonna show you how I've been dealing with forms in React lately. Because, you know, forms in React, they can get overly complicated sometimes. Uh, you have to create a piece of state for each form field, or at least a ref. But the truth is that if you're targeting modern browsers, uh, there are some APIs available that let you both get the data using JavaScript and do validation using plain HTML and CSS. And by modern browsers, I really mean anything newer than IE11. So let me show you how. I have this form here, uh, this form component here, just plain simple form. Uh, I have some labels and some inputs and a text area here. It looks like this. I could have used some selects and checkboxes, radios, doesn't, doesn't matter. It works for all form uh, uh, elements. And I'm not going to create event handlers for each input. Instead, I'm going to use an event handler for on submit. Notice that I already have a button of type submit here. And on my form, I'm going to say on submit equals, I'm going to going to get an event here. And the first thing I want to do is events.preventDefault. Because when you submit a form, its default behavior is to navigate away. And because you're treating it using JavaScript, I don't want that. So I'm going to prevent the default. Next, I'm going to use a form data instance, a uh, new form data. Form data is built into modern browsers, and it allows you to do a bunch of stuff with forms. Right now, I'm interested in uh, uh, getting the form data dot entries, which is just a list of all of my fields, names and data, and the values that are filled with it. So I call new form data of my form, which I can find in event.target. I'm going to put this on an instance like form data, not from data, form data. Next, form data.entries is what I'm looking for. It gives me an iterator of all of the inputs, uh, all of the form fields names and values now notice that i have names name properties here this is something that is part of every form field but we often don't use it when you're treating with javascript but for form data they're required so i have the names and this will return me an iterator with using having these names and the values now for the iterator i can loop over it but because i'm really just interested in a key value pair i'm gonna call object dot from entries on form data dot entries and this will give me my form data. If I console log it, if I fill it right now, and submit, you can see that I have an object with the names and values. Oh, what about validation? Well, validation is also pretty simple. Uh, Nowadays, we have more than input type equals text and button. We have things like input types equal email, which already gives you some validation. Uh, if the user types something that doesn't contain an at sign, it's going to complain. You can also use prop properties such as required, uh, and the browser won't allow the form to be submitted unless the user fill those. So if I refresh here and I try to submit without filling them, notice that the browser will show some UI for us. And the on submit callback is not is not invoked, so I don't have my console log here. The form is not submitted, but for all practical purposes. Now, this browser UI, it's okay, I guess. So if I do this and try to submit again, now the message changes. So it, it's okay, I guess. But if you want to add more uh, uh, style here, you can do so using CSS and some custom pseudo selectors. Uh, I have my contact form CSS here. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say for all the inputs using the pseudo selector invalid, I'm going to do a different kind of border. Now you have to do this for all of the form fields that you have. I also have a text area. The pseudo selector invalid also. Well, I don't have a validation for my text area, but it doesn't really matter. You have to do it for all that you're using that you, if you plan to have validation. And for all of those, what I'm going to do it is I'm going to do a different type of border. I'm just going to copy and paste here. So if I refresh, you can see that now I have this different border. Besides uh, required and the different types like emails, you can also use a pattern if you want and provide a reject uh, with something that it must match. Uh, you provide the, the regular expression within quotes, not a real JavaScript object, because this is an HTML uh, uh, spec, this is not React. 
So here I can do something like, uh, let me think, maybe three letters and say any letter and let's say three letters and then any digit and say four digits. So if you try that now and I try filling this with anything, it's going to complain. Oh, of course I have to do in order. If I can type, and now it's going to say, please match the requested format. Getting better, but what is the requested format? So let's add some hints. You can add hints also and, and make them appear dynamically also just by using plain HTML and CSS. So notice that I wrapped all of my labels and inputs in field sets. That's because I also want to add a, a div here that belongs to this field set just for accessibility purposes. I'm, I'm wrapping in, them in this field set. So here I'm going to have a div. I'm going to add a class name of something like, I don't know, form requirements from Rex. And here I'm going to say name is required. I'm going to do another hint for email saying that a valid email is required. And for order number, I can be more specific and say like a valid order or an order number should have three letters and four numbers. Now I have all of these hints here. I don't want them to appear by default. I just want them to appear if there is an error in that field. And I can do that using the sibling selector. Uh, so I'm going to copy and paste this. And note this React cast has pretty much none React. Uh, but let's go with it. So I'm going to use the sibling selector dot form form rex meaning any form rex that is a sibling of an invalid text or an invalid text area uh, by default i want my form requirements visibility to be hidden and when they are a sibling of an invalid input or text area i'm going to say that visibility is visible let's try again Name is required, email is required. If I fill it, the hint goes away. If I try to submit an order number, it's going to show uh, the hint, an invalid order number. So yeah, that's that makes for a pretty solid uh, user experience, pretty decent user experience with very little boilerplate. The one last thing that I want to do here and that bothers me a little bit is that if I refresh, all of these fields, they come invalid by default which kind of makes sense because name is empty and email is empty, but I, I don't want to stamp on my user on my user's face that things are wrong until he or she touched the form. So I want the, the, the form to only show an invalid state after the user interacts with it. And quite surprisingly, this is actually not easy to do. Uh, you have to use some JavaScript to do that. There are some workarounds like using placeholder tags and checking whether the whether the placeholder is there or not. But I, I don't think this makes for a really good, great user experience. So for the final step of only showing the invalid fields if the user interacts with the input or with the form field, I'm going to use some JavaScript. So in my form here, I'm going to import use state. So import from React. Now I'm using uh, the latest React uh, 17 here with the latest Create React app, and that's why I'm not importing React. I'm only importing user state. Depending on your configuration, it's going to be different. Uh, but here I'm going to create a, a piece of state. So uh, const, and I'm going to call this uh, touched fields. Like I'm going to say the the field is touched. If the user interacted with it, if the user uh, tried to type something and went and, and went away, so I'm gonna say uh, touched fields set touched fields equals use state of an empty object. My plan here uh, is to use this this object something like uh, in, in 
some, some, something like this. I'm going to have an object as the user interacts with each individual form field. I'm going to put the form field's name and just say true uh, there. So I'm going to have something like name, true. And as the user goes interacting, I'm going to stamp email true. So this way I get a list of all of the form elements that the user interacted with. Now, React asks us or, or, or suggests that we use primitives within use state. Numbers, strings, booleans, not an object. Uh, and that makes sense because it doesn't merge the objects automatically and it, you have to be cautious to uh, uh, do only immutable operations. But because this data is tightly coupled together, I'm going to use an object in this, in this case. It's a conscious decision. So I'm going to go here and now for each individual field, I'm going to have to do an change listener. So on change or on blur rather, because on blur happens when the user focus on gets to that, that field focus on that field and then goes away so when the user goes away i'm gonna say uh event or rather i'm going to create a, a separate function here that i can reuse so const set field touched i'm going to get an event here and i'm going to do something like set touched fields I'm going to use the callback format here. So I'm going to have a list of touched fields here. And then I'm going to return an object containing a copy of the original touched fields and event.target.name going to be true of course i have to wrap this into brackets so if i did everything correctly here i should be able to just say on blur set field touched and i'll do this for all of my inputs also this one here i'm not validating anything on on the text area so i'm not going to go there but that's pretty much what i'm going to do and then with that object, I can go on and, and do something on this input that signals to my CSS that this input has, be, has been touched. I could add a different class name. Uh, if you're using CSS in JS, you can just go directly and manipulate the CSS that you're, do, that you're injecting there to just add the red border uh, if the state is invalid and touched. In my case here, I'm going to, to, to add a data attribute. Uh, it's really a matter of preference, but because I don't want to, to deal with different class names here, uh, I'm just going to inject a, a data attribute. So I'm going to say something like data uh, touched is going to be equals, and I'm going to get touched fields of name. Here it's going to be touched fields of email. And here it's going to be touched fields of order number. Just quick sanity check here. Let's inspect my elements. If I focus and go away, I have a data touched through. Oh, and now I can use this within my CSS selector. to just show the input containing the data touch through, which is invalid, the red border, and also the hints. If I refresh everything, now my form comes in an empty state. If I click my name and go away, now it shows a red border and a hint. So yeah, this is a really good way to do forms in React. It doesn't require a lot uh, of stuff. But I have the impression that people nowadays won't do anything uh, unless it comes in form of a custom hook. <laughs> uh, because even this uh, uh, set touched fields here might sound like a lot. So yeah, let's do a custom hook here just for, for good measure. So I'm going to say function. I'm not going to use 
I'm not going to name it use forms or something like that because I'm not really adding any functionality to the form other than just marking the fields as being touched. So I'm going to say use marked fields or touched fields or whatever. Uh, of course, I will save this on a separate file later so that I can reuse across different forms. So right now I'm just going to move my use state there. Uh, also my custom function here to set the field touched. And for good measure, I'm also going to throw, instead of having to go uh, and do the data touched and on blur for each field, I'm also going to return an object that I can use, uh, that I can reuse there. So it's going to look something like this. I'm going to say const bind field. It's going to request a field name as a parameter. And then it's simply going to return an object containing these two things here. The data touched is going to be uh, true or false whether, whether touched fields contains the field name and on blur I'm gonna be I'm gonna call such fields touched I'm going to return I'm going to return a set just bind field for now maybe cost bind fields equals use market fields and in my forms now instead of manually doing this i can just spread over the bind field of the name so in my case in this case it's a bind field of name in this case the bind field of email and in this case here of order number that's if this still works touch field is not defined uh am i using touch fields i got this wrong all right so now if i navigate through my form i got all the same errors as before now one final bit I only show errors right now if the user goes to a, uh, to a form field and leaves. But I also want to check all at once if I hit submit. Uh, I want to, to put all invalid fields, mark all invalid fields red. And to do that, I'm also going to create a, a different piece of state here. And I'm going to say that all fields were touched. I'm going to start as false. And I'm going to create a set all fields touched equals an event and what i'm gonna do here is oh well, i can i can actually set touch fields and i can actually just rewrite uh my 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 object disregard whatever touched fields were there because now I'm, I'm going to say that all of the fields were touched here uh, to check whether they're they were touched not only I need to check uh, if their name was specifically touched but I can also check touch fields dot all or touch fields dot field name I'm going to also return that bind field set all fields touched and I want to set all fields touched when the user tries to submit now, we already know that the onSubmit event only fires when the form is valid. So I cannot put that call here. I cannot call it here. But I can add an onClick handler to the button, even though it's a submit button. And this will fire every time the button is clicked. So I can say onClick, set all fields touched. Am I not getting it here? Yes, I'm not getting it here, so set off it's touched. Good. So now, again, blurring works. Let me refresh. If I try to submit, also everything works as expected.
Cool. So again, there are some trade-offs in using this kind of form here. The main trade-off is that the, there, is no there, there isn't much flexibility with the validation. You've got what, if, what you've got, like required, some different types of inputs and a pattern. Uh, if you need like super finely graded validation, uh, then this is not for you. And then I would go back and use just plain controlled forms in React. But for most big boring forms, this is what I've been using nowadays. Hope you've enjoyed.